We cannot fully claim our twin flame when we're coming from any ounce of fear. We have to leave no stone unturned. We have to turn over each of our love blocks. We have to see why we're calling in this type of energy. If you're calling in unavailable love or a twin flame runner or a false flame and it's not working out the way you want it right now, if things aren't the way you want it, then you need to work on that. You need to come in with love. And there's usually a core wound or what I call the sacred wound. If we have someone in our lives who's not giving us what we want, we really, really want them to give it to us. So for those of you women out there that have a twin flame runner, someone you, you think is your twin flame, I have so many women that say, I know who my twin flame is. If you're in that scenario, you just know this is your twin flame and, and yet they're not showing up for you, then I urge you to actually just let them go and see if they come back and sending love to this so-called twin flame. And I urge you also to not call them your twin flame. Call them someone that you care about, someone that you would really like to be with, someone that you're hoping things will work out with. When we use the term twin flame too soon, it can actually block true twin flame energy from coming in. That's what attachment does. When we attach to something, the universe can no longer give us from that unconditional surrendered space our entire bounty. So women who come from fear will have a thought, if, if he can't love me, then no one will. Or if it's not this guy, if it's not this twin flame, then I'm And I had that, I had that thought. I thought, you know, this man walked out, my twin flame counterfeit, I'm never gonna have anything greater. I have something so much better and I wish I had listened to this advice that I'm giving you now. So if you're thinking about this person over and over again, it's normal if you're in love, but is he thinking about you as much as you're thinking about him? Can you talk to him about it? Can you say, I'm just thinking about you all the time time and I'm like totally scared and nervous. Do you feel the same way about me? I've never felt this way about someone. Can you vocalize all those feelings? And if not, they're probably not in full alignment. There's probably some inner child healing, some abandoned child wounds that are getting turned into a love obsession. And that could look like just obsessive thoughts. It could be checking Facebook and seeing if he's messaged you, um, really having this kind of anxiety, this excitement, but to the borderline of maybe obsession. Oftentimes my clients will have an unhealthy separation process with one or both of their parents. They'll have a, a father that left them or they'll have an unhealthy codependence with their mother and then they'll go off to college and what they should have had, which was healthy separation in the early childhood, becomes this polarized, need to bond with someone before it was their mother and then they they went from mother to wanting their twin flame and it can be this separation anxiety that's actually fueling the desire for the twin flame union so again love breeds love twin flame love is only fueled by love not fear so if there's an unhealthy attachment a bond that's coming from obsession then it's something that needs to be cleared before calling in your twin flame. Wherever you're at, be loving and compassionate to where you are and work on it. Get the support that you need. Fear is always trumped by love. So what is the fastest way to get over someone, to get over a breakup or even a heartbreak that's been lingering forever? Like I was heartbroken in kindergarten and it snowballed into other heartbreaks. And I realized like for me anyways, once your heart is broken, it, it can build kind of like a scar tissue and this can bring in more of that wound to fully clear your heartbreak and to get heart broken open. We want to come from the unconditional love space. We want to really tap into this deep Kuan Yin, Aphrodite, aphrodisiac, amorous place where we love everything from our bodies, unconditionally loving our cellulite, loving where we're at, and then making the changes through that divine masculine action taking and setting ourselves up for success. It always starts with love. A big part of unconditional love starts always at self-love, unconditionally loving ourselves and to have a self-care practice is absolutely required. So your fun work assignment today is going to be to pick one thing. Maybe it's having a sacred bath and doing a bathing ritual. Maybe it's booking a massage, or maybe it's going to your favorite hiking trail a little outside of town where you haven't been for a while. 
do something really special for yourself. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be the five-star massage at a gorgeous spa, or it could be. It could be, you know, buying yourself your favorite tea and um, maybe putting some of that in a foot bath and adding some salts. Anything that feels very decadent for you, I want you to pick one thing. And if you do more, if you do something every day, but at least one thing this week. What is one area in your life that you can heal with love? When this is healed with love and no attachment to outcomes, how will you feel? How will your life be different from how it is now? I hope you enjoyed this training and I look forward to seeing you next time. Namaste, namaste.